Gosh, Lord. Watch out. I'm out of control, Chef. My goodness. The violence. Jeez. Hey. It's a wrestling version tasting. It's Ed and Chris. Chef Song. Drink, drink. Drink, drink. All right. So we are doing our virtual tasting once again because y'all look thirsty and we provide wine every single week. We look forward to uh, doing this every week of your life. Until there's no more weeks. And then after life, we plan on doing it. Oh, yeah. We've already yeah. got a, a slot yeah. picked out for us. I hope it's not too warm. <laughs> I like our chances. We better enjoy this temperature. Yeah, let's, let's enjoy these nice chilled whites while we can. Um, we are, look at this. We're going to get into some bubbles, Thank Jeff. You. I know I just splashed them in there, but I want to be dramatic and really show this up. I love the theater. Uh, yeah, we, we, we just uh, met with a new distributor, a Struskin. A Struskin. That's the goalie. Can I say that's it? I can't the goalie say it. for the Rangers. Oh right? my God, we lost She's a Durkin. fortune on him. Yeah, She's Durkin. Anyway, um, Jessup and Catherine came by and did a tasting with us. We got a new portfolio, and uh, my. My apologies for massacring the name of the, the distributor there, but um, the point is, is that we were really excited about the wines and wanted to do a, a video while it was fresh on our mind after our tasting, and then Chef can you know kind of get up to speed with us. Becca and I had a little taste through, and now it's your turn. And I was really taken by these, and I wanted to pull them aside for you to taste. I love it. So that you would... Um, it was very kind of you. Yeah, I and mean, this is uh, something uh, new to us. Maybe not new to the world, but new to us. And whenever we find new things, we want to share them with you guys out there. And uh, the ancestral method is always something that I've really been... Uh, that I've really enjoyed in terms of, you know bubbles you know i like all kinds of bubbles and this one happens to be one of my favorite because it's so old school now what happens is you know they you know back in the day they would put these bottles like in a really really cold stream or something like that it would slow fermentation down and then they would cork it and then fermentation would pick back up when it warmed back up giving you bubbles inside the bottom so this isn't the intensity of bubbles that you would expect from a champagne. I don't know, they're pretty intense. They are, they are, but they're, you don't, it doesn't require a cage. You're not in danger of losing an eyeball, which is good, right? You know, we don't want to uh, lose our eyeballs. No, we don't. No, we can barely yeah. see. No, I said, well, I guess it, it would be bad. I, I mean, we know. both have readers and we both can't see, but anyway, so this is, um, this is a, a beautiful, uh, Leia is a place in, uh, was it the vinegar capital? Yeah, Medina. Medina, mm -hmm. yeah. So the home of, of really balsamic vinegar. Yeah. Right? So really famous th this this small region here inside of of a famous vinegar region, which makes sense because you have to have grapes to have vinegar. Um, they're famous for using the leaves. That's, that's right. how it started. They yeah. instead of letting the leaves compost. Right. They pick all the leaves, and that's how they do, turn it into to, to balsamic. So it's. Uh, they, they were... Uh, Utilizing product. They were being sustainable before it was cool. Before it was cool. And this is from Terry Quia, uh, which I was, like I said, I was very str struck by this wine because it just has such a great taste of terroir, great taste of the chalkiness. I mean, it's just like all the things that you would want from a, you know, honestly, from like a northern French bubble. But I really this like northern this. Italy. I really like this, you know, and I'm not the biggest you're, bubble guy. But, but I love your it. wife sure would. Oh, God. Order me a case. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is really bitter, and I, and I mean that in a good way. I mean, I, I really like it a yeah. lot. And that's just, this is my style of bubbles. Yes. Because I don't like a hint of sweet in, right. my, in, my, in my sparkling. Mm -hmm. And this is not that. And so this is, I mean, I love this. This, to me, tastes like a wine with bubbles instead of something bubbly that's also wine. I totally agree. This uh, this has all the complexities that a wine geek wants, but it's also very pleasurable to those who are just enjoying a day in the sun. Great fruit, great great winter dry. I mean, it's delicious. Yeah, I think you could. Uh, this is almost to me. It has so much delicious fruit in it. It's like a mimosa without the juice. Mm -hmm. Very creamy. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I just love the fruit component here. Finished with that extreme dry, dry chalky. Um, I mean, you know, it's almost like you can taste. Uh, the, the pips a little bit. Oh, uh, yeah. A little bit. Absolutely. I mean, this is a... Um, 
<clears throat> what what's the word? Is it revealing, but you you I mean you you know a lot. This is a very complex wine. Mm -hmm. it, you know, they're not masking this yeah. with, with the, the flavor of the wine with bubbles. Right. It's just complementing. Right. Yes, absolutely, totally agree. This is something that at our chef's table we'll probably have to have this oh something. absolutely because it's the complexity or you know one of my big things about picking wines for chef's food is well, those dishes are so freaking complex i gotta have complex wines it's very rare that i could use a simple one at the table it, it, yeah. this is just that but at the same time it's not so complicated and so layered that the average person that's not really into wine couldn't enjoy it because they are going to enjoy it as long as they're okay with dry but there is a great fruit here uh, the fruit doesn't that, make it, yeah, yeah, hide, yeah. Mm -hmm. hide the dryness. Especially as it warms up a little, the fruit's blooming mm -hmm. uh, a lot more, right? right out of the, right out of the shoot there, you know, it, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. Beautiful nose too. Great nose. Mm -hmm. And uh, honeysuckle yeah. on the nose. Big just, time. Just, just delightful. This, so, I mean, this, this really coincides with the weather we're having right now. Right. I've been out pressure washing the deck and when I, I was figuring, I was like, I'm gonna drink two red wines. And then I saw that, I'm like, woo, yeah. uh, refreshing. And uh, chef, <laughs> chef, to his credit, was not, I kind of lassoed him into this video. We weren't, usually don't do it till tomorrow. But I'm like, I got this bubble open Oh, now. I see. You know, it was a great I, wanted, I wanted to seize the opportunity. It was a great The cab would hold up just fine tomorrow, till tomorrow, no problem. But yeah, this is- But uh, I just, I just wanted to get into this. Well, not, not to mention, I mean, beyond the, Another compliment to this beyond its complexity is, uh, you know, the chef's table, we, we tell stories. You know, we tell the story of the wine, we tell the story of the food. That's a great story there. With yeah, the, I mean, uh, this, with this, the original method, what's it yeah, called? Uh, ancestral. Ancestral method. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so always a great story there, great region, great, I mean, so, you know, come right out of the gates with a, yeah. with, you know, it kind of, you know, <laughs> tell me more. Right. <laughs> and of course, you know, basically this is a paused fermentation. So, yeah, you can do it in a myriad of ways, but typically it's done through cold. You shut the yeast down. And so you, you're in the, in the middle of fermentation. Of course, you know, we, we just got back from Portugal and we were, we were talking about, you know, why they, why they fortify wines to kill the yeast so it won't reactivate. So they're killing the yeast to relieve residual sugar. As long as there's yeast and sugar in a wine, watch out. The, we, the yeast is going to, it's going to go to it. And so, but you can do it. Almost like, well, we also had Vino Verde. Yeah. They bottled it so fast. It it's an accidental it's carbonation. Accidental yeah. car carbonation. This is far more carbonated than Vino Verde, but far less than the Champenoise method. So it's somewhere in between. It's, it's beautiful. It seems so authentic to me. It very, that's a great word. It, it is authentic. And, and you know, I, I feel like, <coughs> and not only does, uh, I mean, traditional method too, or, uh, you know, I mean, adding a dosage, you're adding natural things. So, I mean, it's sure. not like yeah, you're, yeah. Yeah. You know, you're not cheating, but yeah. but there's something about, you know, like the Trappist day where you're just capturing the yeast right. out of the air and not, yeah. you know, so it's the yeast yeah. like you were talking about. If you want to taste the region, you, you know, the terroir, you, you need to capture the wild yeast, not put sure. an encapsulated yeast into right. it to where I feel like yeah. that could mask some of the local maybe yeah, not sure maybe not just thinking out loud but like you're capturing i, I like where you're headed with this you show. know right there in the air and you're you mm -hmm. know i mean that, yeah. that that that's getting the real thing yeah and i mean be, just because the way i was taught ancestral method i just i just pictured like you know people like little villagers putting a bottle you down in a creek you know, it. you know and i, I don't you know, know it's, just, it. it's just in my head I, obviously they're probably not doing that in modern times but um, and even in this this old school label, you know, it's just like you know that is just. I mean, you talk I'm, about I'm a down, classic. I'm down with this. This is it. What I, I love about this label, it, not, it doesn't look like it came off a of press. It looked like like somebody at the winery mm -hmm. had some colored pencils and like and that's, that. and that's a compliment. Oh, absolutely. I mean, they're very. But I mean, like they slapped a blank, like the, just the uh, the the wea. Yeah, that was all that was there. Yeah. And then the people at the winery kind of right. Yeah, they put their and of course, uh, Chef Chris's daughter has been working on labels for the for the restaurant that are in this same vein. I would say. It's, yeah, absolutely. Not, I mean, it's not the same, but 
No, it, the, spirit the spirit is the spirit. It's mm-hmm. Style, yes. style, and spirit, absolutely. And uh, yeah, I don't know. There's, a, there's. To me, that's it's simple elegance. And that's the best kind of elegance. And I would say, reflective of what's in the bottom, chef. Um, I know this is, uh, you know, once again, I've, I've Shanghai right on you. the spot. Put me I've on just, the spot. Like, put you on the spot. I've stalled long Schnuckered enough. Again. You got ten minutes according to uh, our time here. What do you think you're gonna have for a parent? We gotta do mushrooms. All oh, right. You gotta do mushroom. This, like this screams mushroom to me. It screams cheese. You gotta have a creamy, grassy cheese with this, mm. and some a mushroom of some sort. Probably gonna roast some mushroom and yeah. put a cream. Depending on what's, 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 what's coming what's in the back going around. Like, yeah. like I said, this this may be. We don't know which the the, the order these are gonna come out in. So uh, I, it's hard to say because this might be next week's sure. tasting. Yeah. So, We'll see what's coming, but that will be the speaking of the the spirit. Sure, yeah, that'll be the spirit yeah, of the taste. Absolutely, fantastic. That's what I my, that's what my palate's craving when I drink this. That and more. It, it, it actually screams. Let me get a little it more. Screams of that. It, it screams more. It screams. Hey, you gonna finish that? Yeah. Well, we gotta save some of that for Becca though. Yes. We'll have a revolt on our ass. Yeah. Stabbed in the back when you turn well, around. Well, and Clay as well. Clay True is, enough. Clay's all about the Trey's whites. all about so. the whites. So, most of you know that I'll be uh, in Italy in the next three weeks. So we're this, you know, we want to we want to lay some some videos down for you while I'm gone because it'll be I'll be separated from my guy here. Maybe but I might get on a plane. Might show up. Yeah, I might you got a place to stay. I might get that's on a for plane. sure. So I wouldn't I wouldn't put all my eggs in that basket. I'm gonna yeah. wake up on a Wednesday. You know what? Just, we I'm still not do this. we I'm still have down. that luxurious video that we need to send out from our porch <clears throat> trip to. Well, Tamisa offered to go ahead and post it, and I said that um, <clears throat> that we're gonna go ahead and we need to talk about that. We would create a separate YouTube. Video yeah, yeah. That is kind of like Chris and Ed shenanigans or whatever, you know. Yeah. So, but she's ready to upload it as soon as we decide what we want to name the other channel. So it's not going to be shenanigans? I mean, I'm happy with that. I think it would stick out. It would be accurate. Yeah. It would be accurate, yes. And that was yet another video we didn't custom. I don't think. I don't, I don't know. know. I, I can't remember. I was hammered. <laughs> I was, Day drinking. I hard. was lit. I was lit I was the lit. entire trip to Portugal. And I'll probably do the same yeah, thing. Yeah, we, could, we couldn't even film in the morning. You know, bubbles every morning. Oh, gosh. Going right into wine. Two hour wine tastings. Yeah. You know what? I'm, I'm, I was like, uh, when what so trip? When I'm booking, right? I'm pretty sure we went somewhere. Yeah. I just don't remember. Um, this Italian trip. When I'm booking these Italian tastings, mm-hmm. they're saying allow three to four hours. I'm like, good God! What are we gonna be doing? Oh, Am I gonna you, take a nap while? Do I'm you there? know how hard they're gonna go with the cheeses and the 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 pairings? And of course, you'll have a walking vineyard tours. Yeah, because you know, oh, you'd be right at them. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. In, in Italy, that's like unheard of to not have your, your, your chateau or whatever they call it, your villa, not at your vineyard. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's like they don't do that there. Right. It's very rare to have. Right. A, a, like a, I don't mean like a negotiant one. Right. But yeah, like yeah. a winery. Yeah, yeah. Like you're on the vineyard. You're on the grounds. I mean, yeah. you're not going to be offsite. Mm-hmm. So I know you're going to get like little walking tours. You're going to get barrel room tours. Hopefully not a six mile hike <laughs> up the side of a freaking I terrace. It, I don't think I don't think it's going to be as. Uh, oh boy, me and you. I think I'm you. still I'm still sore from that. I think. Can you believe I did that? You're like a billy goat. I can't believe I, I finished that. I've been telling everybody about that hike. That, was, that, that hike stood was, out. It was, it was really trip. spectacular. It really did. But. Uh, I'm not what they you call athletic, so that was a real miracle. You're athletic in different ways. You're just not like running up and down a court. Right. You're physical all day, every day. Right. Even but, when you're off work, you're doing gardening, you're doing fly fishing. Yes. It's like you're. I couldn't believe I made it up that hike though. <laughs> I mean, because that was like a. They like, didn't say six that was a miles. legit hike. Now the first mile and a half, I could do that. Oh all day. yeah, we're just strolling down a river. <clears throat> I could have, the door I could have gone thirty miles. Yeah, the way that first mile and a half mm-hmm. went. But I mean, and then, I just and it was, it was like, like we're it, going it was up like there. A joke, like every time he came around, like we just weaved through the vineyards and up these these 
slate rock little outcropping. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm not calling them steps. No. <laughs> <laughs> He's a little. I mean, you can be beside a house, beside a dog, and you come around a. You think you're coming out, and you see a road. And you're like, sweet, a road. And she'd be like, no, no. <laughs> And she'd find another little pal. Well, you know, one more. Oh, yeah. One and that more. one more was another oh. freaking mile. Easy. Oh. Easy. That's what she meant, one more mile. Although I'll say, I mean, we got so far up there, like, I almost wanted you to go You couldn't to the see the river. You couldn't see the river. But there was, like, we were, like, so close to the very top. And I, I almost, I was like, I just wanted to go that extra 100 feet. Just so I could say we were absolutely oh yeah, we but there was someone's private yeah. home up there, yeah. uh, and I just but I wanted to so bad just yeah. to, to have yeah plant the flag yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> we were here yeah it was a, quite an accomplishment well it was but then we ate and drank our cares away after that well what was great about coming back down even though it was hard on the shins you know the 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 ladies kind of separated. And so Ed and I were walking together and, and just, uh, cause you knew the hard part was over, you know, like the mentally big change yeah. once you start descending and you know, that one's, we could start noticing the walls, noticing the flowers, noticing the, yeah. all of, you know, we picked up on survival like mode was, was over, yeah. right? So you can now, <laughs> we, I think that we, we picked up on more detail, right? <clears throat> yeah. You know, That's what like, it's funny. Like the detail coming up was like, don't die. Because on the river, when it was chill, I'm like taking pictures oh, of flowers. Oh, yeah. We're like, oh, look at look, this. Look, there's a fish jumping. There's another fish rising. Yeah. And yeah. look at that train track over there. And yeah. like, then, then it got, yeah. it was like, I was expecting like a trial at some point. <laughs> like, only three of us are coming out of this. <laughs> right. <laughs> Who's it going to be? <laughs> yeah, survival of the fittest. Anyway, we, we survived. It was great. And boy, it, you talk about a strong finish. That glorious um, four-course meal at a hotel yeah all that green wine, and with a song paired wine song paired wines and uh it's just glorious then we got to to go to the stomp room and the barrel room and then do a tasting yeah life's life's great then a nap <laughs> <laughs> yeah all right well let's talk about our next italian wine uh this is from the veneto this is right up in the land of prosecco uh, wow. Di Stefani, and this is a cab. Now, this is a, what we always think of when we think of um, Italian, but uh, this would be, fall into the IGT uh, classification. Of course, that IGT is often associated with Super Tuscan, but it is, it is beyond Tuscany. IGT is basically gives the ability for non-Italian varietals or non-traditional um, Italian varietals in a region that doesn't typically accept other varietals. So, you know, when, when I, what I'm trying to say is like, well, we think of Barolo, it's Nebbiolo, right? Nebbiolo has got to be, and that's it. But if you had an IGT in this region, uh, you could grow uh, Sangiovese or uh, whatever. Uh, I'm trying to think of something off the top of my head. Gargano. Tempranillo. Yeah, Tempranillo, whatever. Whatever it might be, you can grow it. And that's the, the beauty of IGT. So we're in the Veneto, of course, that's in the northeastern part of Italy and known for great whites, great bubbles, of course, in Prosecco. And, um, you know, these are regions that it's not, it's not exclusively white by any means. And this is a perfect example of why it's not because reds do great as well. I think just commercially, certainly in America, we have an association of whites to this area because they are absolutely stunning. And um, I'm really, uh, I want to, you know, reiterate this portfolio that we went through. We also had some beautiful alpine whites that we will be getting into mm. in the very near future. I'm very excited. That sounds so, great without even tasting them. Yes. So, Cab, you love it. You know it so well, but it does taste a little different in Italy, just like it tastes different in Chile, Australia, California, heck, even Napa, Sonoma. Uh, are different, and of course, Washington State. We love oh, the cab boy, expressions from there. Full and, extraction. Yeah, and I mean, obviously, it is a French varietal, so I don't need to mention how great it is in France. So let's let's dive into this cab. I gotta tell you, I need to get my uh, <clears throat> my little sticker because Bre Becca brought me a little sip of something. She's like, I can't finish this. He tries it. Well, what is it? And she's like, I don't know, it's from the, you know, it's, she goes, I didn't hear that. She's, they're doing the Italian tasting. I took a sip. I was like, no, it is. this is Cab. Right. 
I was like, nailed it. And, 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 and as it turns out, I was like, no, they're, right. not, they're tasting something different. Right. So, yeah, I win. That's my one sticker for the week. This is absolutely delicious. You're going to fall in love with the nose on this. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, it, it, it's it is fabulous. It is oat, uh, but again, not oat oat because Italians don't over oat. So floral to be oat. Yeah. What we have here is a beautiful dry, it's fruity. Just one of, it is very fruity, but a beautiful dry finish. Spice. It, it's, I would say, a medium plus body. It's not mm-hmm. as not as big and and thick as many cabs. No, it's, it's not as... It's than thicker. Yeah. And it's, the spice is more pronounced than, right. it, than it is tanniky. I would, mm. Yeah. This is very... It's, it's a great harmonization of mm. new world and old world. Because actually, when I first tasted it, I was like, I, I, blindfolded, I would not be able to predict... I would not be able to call this as an Italian cab. But as it's opened up and spent some time, there are those... Those little clues that tell you little telltale mm-hmm. things, right? Yeah. Because uh, Chris and I have always been a big believer that uh, all grapes taste Italian when they're grown in Italy. There's yeah, you know, that's, that's absolutely. I just don't truth. know. I mean, I know that it's sounds ridiculous, but there's but so true. many other examples in other countries where but it's true. you would have a hard time saying that it it tastes like the country it's grown in. It tastes more like the varietal. That's exactly right. The, the lone exception. Although I've never had enough varietals from there to, to give a, I think the sample size is too small. Mm-hmm. Is uh, Chile the green? Oh, yeah. The green you Big can time. always pick out green the, and the reds. The greens and the reds. Yeah. So, but like I said, my sample size, mm-hmm. I don't know if that would would hold up. But it seems like Italian wines and Chilean wines, mm-hmm. you know, you're, that's your best bet for blind tasting. Call sure. It. What I, what I want to make note of why I really was excited about showing this wine really quickly <laughs> to Chef. Um, I was really, you know, feeling a real high from our, our meeting together with uh, with Jessup and Catherine. And, and I just wanted to kind of get the ball rolling and get excited about their portfolio. This drinks very cab flavor. And then towards the, the tail end of this is very Italian structured. The dust, the Italian dust on yeah. the finish for me. And, it's, and it, it, is, it is that medium weight because all mm-hmm. of their wines, all typically, typically not all, but maybe not the typically, Barolo, maybe a couple of but, but that's normally, it's still, yeah, yeah, it's medium plus. Medium plus. It's still not weighty. <coughs> yeah, it's not heavy. Lord, no, it just carries it's flavor. It carries it's a lot of flavor. It carries, yeah. I mean, the flavor is the, hidden. I mean, it, it, you know, it's, it's always so deceiving you when you. <laughs> right, yeah, it's like, oh, it's light as a feather. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you're like, nope, mm. that's Italian. It's always dusty and it's always light. But, um, uh, you know, you this is, um, color-wise, I would say it's light for the varietal. Uh, I would say it's pretty light for a cab, but it's not that it's light, it's light for the varietal. For the varietal, but mm. it's dark for an Italian. Yeah, right, and that is, yeah, exactly. So... So you, like, you wouldn't confuse this. It looks with, like a wimpy Napa cab, and it looks like a really big attack. You would you wouldn't co- you wouldn't uh, con- you know, confuse this with a Sangiovese or Nebbiolo or anything of that nature. So, or maybe maybe an Alianco, um, right. you know, maybe maybe in that direction. But it tastes like cab because it is cab. It just has an Italian flair to it. I think it's wonderful. I think it's also very versatile in food pairing, chef, because it's not Easy. over the top. Easy. Yeah, I, I was just thinking about how great this would have been on that smoked duck dish you had over the oh, weekend. Oh, yeah, the pate. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. think this would have worked with that. Well, the mustard, we, too. We, the we, mustard yeah. and the nuts, the pistachios. We, we had done a, um, a Nebbiolo from Longue on Sunday night. Uh, and I think this would also work. Just a little fruitier, Well, obviously. a little fruitier. And, you know, the, 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 a little spice from the mustard, the, the little crunch from the pistachios, not to mention the smoke, be a very elegant pairing with that. Yeah. As a matter of fact, let's just go ahead and call it. That's what we're going to do. Boom. You have some left? No, nope, but I'll make a note. Oh, okay. Cool. That was amazing, by the way. It was stunning. We had a really, really... It was stunning. We had we had some nurses. We had a retired fireman. And we had some people from the, from the Midwest. Yep. And it was just a really nice melting cool pot of yeah. personalities and backgrounds. And we had a... Chef brought a woman to tears. She, she not broke, because she he was, Not because he was shouting obscenities. <laughs> But because the food was so wonderful, the moment was so special. She got she got overwhelmed was, in the it was such in, the, an, in the in the experience. Well, I mean, and, sharing it with her friends, which, 
in turn made it overwhelm overwhelming to you. Absolutely. Oh, absolutely. You're you're so honored to be I mean, able to, to be the you know the facilitator of that. It's it's uh well I think it's a culmination of the whole experience. You know the wine, the food, the <coughs> the atmosphere with mm-hmm. the restaurant not open, <coughs> the intimacy of that yeah. setting. You know I get it. You yeah. know and but it, but it, it's like you you want to retire after a dinner yeah. like that. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. You just want to hang your hat. That was, go that out was on one that of those note. ten out of yeah, ten. Yeah, exactly. It was ten out of ten. And uh, you want to kind of go out on that note, mm-hmm. and uh, it was it was really it was incredibly special, incredibly special. Yeah, and that's saying something because you are you're always like nitpicking and like I'm not happy with this, I'm not happy with that. But when you see could have been guests, better. <laughs> right? Could have been better. You're always like that. That's great. This is the sign of all great chefs. They're never happy. Oh, it would, yeah, they always think they could have done one more thing. <laughs> I, I mean, I thought it was a beautiful menu. It was. Uh, it was a beautiful it menu. It was diverse. And I thought it, yeah, I was getting... Holy cow. It had, it was hitting. The only thing, you know, it had a lot of different styles, lots of techniques. It had home runs in there, though. There were home it, runs, a lot of techniques. It wasn't all geeky. A couple of curveballs, but, you know, they were very approachable, yet well, still whimsical. Yes. I mean, it was... in The dessert. I, I, I did, I tell you, I, I was very happy with the progression of it. Yeah. You know, nothing felt. Sometimes I feel like something's out of place, or like, oh, you're reaching, or you're trying mm-hmm. too hard on something. <clears throat> I felt like it was a great transition from amuse to dessert. I thought it worked. Yeah, and, and, the, well. and, and your menu gave me a canvas to select some really cool wines. Crazy, and I, wines. and you know, like, and you know, I was trying to explain to our guests. I was like, y'all don't realize this, but I have wines that are just sitting around for years, waiting for a dish because. I have to have every wine ready for ready. whatever yeah, happens. Ready, yeah. I can't just like, oh, here's the menu, and then just go pull a bottle of wine out of my butt. I have to have or one. order one. Yeah, right, actually, actually, you do have to go pull it out of your yeah, butt because it'll, be mean, it'll be a week later before yeah. I get a bottle of wine. Yeah. So, you know, just like I get it so geeked on a personal, professional level, I get it's geeked out watch. that I get to pull out these wines. <laughs> like, oh, I've been waiting to serve this. Oh, wine. and you'll be caravan them, and you'll be. Doing this, and you'd be hopping around in your little secret squirrel <laughs> stashes. I mean, it's so much fun to yeah. watch. So we all win when the when 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 the chef's table is is booked, because uh, we don't get to do it every single week. Some weeks we do it twice a week. Yeah, so yeah. hell, we did three weeks, three times because we factored in the chef's yeah, lunch. Yeah, we had one week where we did it three yeah. times. We did a uh, we did a Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, um, and both you know. I'm getting ready to leave for Italy. There's three weeks that I don't get to do the chef's table, and that was just the best chef's table. To it was a good a send off, and like, and, and I think it's going to be very healthy to have these few weeks. So we're we will we'll, not that we've had a letdown. Don't get me wrong, but yeah. I can't wait to see what we do with it refreshed. Yeah, yeah, and you'll get a little separation from that. You know, sometimes you just need a need a little yeah. tiny. Yeah, like when, when, you, when you hit a peak that high, you need a breather. You need to kind of mm-hmm. step back, take yeah. a look at it. Yeah. You know, I think it's going to be very healthy. And uh, also, just as a as a note, that Scotch egg that wasn't a Scotch egg. <laughs> that, was that duck. So- <laughs> that duck yolk was from another planet. Yeah, so thank you, Kate okay. Hedge Farms. Yeah, stunning. It was a breaded duck egg, similar to Scotch. Egg. <clears throat> it was just without the meat coating. Everything else was identical. Mm-hmm. But we were serving it with Wagyu. So, I mean, that would have just either been too much protein, but also it would have been washed out. You yeah. Know, that would just like, when you're serving anything beside Wagyu, another protein, I mean, it's going to, it's a loser already before you've even had a bite of it. So, the, the spirit of it was scotch egg. It's just, not, we didn't want meat on top of meat for the sake of meat. Yeah, that's a standalone dish mm-hmm. when, when it has meat on it. For but sure. boy, oh boy, those were. Those were really, really nice. Yeah, that was uh, that was a real, a real treat. Well, any of you that are interested in having meals like that, you know, feel free to, to give us a call here at the restaurant uh, and, and book something of that nature. You know, we, we love to do fancy things. Of course, Thursday nights, 6 p.m., downtown Mount Area, we're doing our tastings of four different wines. Um, we do four times 50 weeks, roughly, about 200 a year. About 200 a year. Yeah. And of course, we do virtual videos too. So if you just want to pick up a, a tasting kit, have a couple pick bottles up, of wine. Pick up 100 f- bottles for 
for the year and expand your repertoire. That's right. And uh, we're, we're always looking for something we haven't had. It's, it might not be new to the world, but it's new to us. And there's just way too many wines out there to not be exploring. There's just, they all have... And they're nagging at you. They're yeah. keeping you up at night. Right. They, they, you know, all they, those they wines out me. there, I haven't, I haven't tasted them, I haven't drank right. them. I gotta, I gotta achieve. That's right. You know, I, I appreciate people being loyal to a beverage, but uh, I gotta tell you, there's just too many different tastes and textures and... Yeah, there's just Old too many world. stories out there to not try them all. It's true. So and that's what, what, a, what a journey. Yeah. And uh, anybody that's hunting any special wines, feel free to ask. I'll certainly try to hunt you down. I had a couple people ask for some wines this week that I'm trying to hunt down for them. You know, uh, that's what I live to do is to find those wines that you want to enjoy. Remember to like our video and to make any comments you'd like. We love feedback, love whether it. it's negative or positive. You right. know, we don't have the best production team. Well, it's growing. But we do make a video that's what, 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 somewhat the content entertaining. What counts? Content, yes. We're, we're not bells and whistles, that's for sure. But we do appreciate you each and every week. We'll catch you next time. Take care, everybody. Thanks for tuning in.